Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Andrew. And we're Envy Board Gaming. And today we are reviewing the game Jurassic World, The Legacy of Isla Nublar. Yeah. And this game is published by Funko Games and it is designed by Prospero Hall. Now, for this game, since it's a legacy game, we're not going to do a teach overview. Mm -hmm. um, we might talk a little bit about just what you're doing in the game um, without mm -hmm. any spoilers. Uh, and we'll end up giving our review and, you know, talk about our likes or dislikes very vaguely so we don't spoil mm -hmm. anything. Um, and after we give our scores, we're going to give you guys fair warning. And then before we talk, because we want to talk a little bit about spoiler stuff. Yeah. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, we'll hold off until the end to see if it's something you're interested to, to see. If you don't, I'll make sure to give you, you know, good warning so that you can turn off the video. That way, if you're expecting to play it or want to play it. You know, we don't want to ruin that for you. But for those that are interested, we're going to do a little section of spoilery stuff. Yeah. Okay? So, Legacy of Isla Nublar, right? So, this was a big campaign mm -hmm. on Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of buzz about it. You know, Jurassic World is a huge IP. Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, all that. Big IP game. This idea of going and building up your own dinosaur park and things are happening and chaos is ensuing mm -hmm. um, was obviously very appealing, right? right? And so after this game came out and right when things were starting to deliver, right when this game was delivering, there was a, uh, a review by the Dice Tower that came out and everybody on that review gave this game a three. So real bad, three out of 10 across mm -hmm. the board. Uh, some yeah. actively said that they hated it, and after that video went up, whoo, comments on this thing went crazy, right? And mm -hmm. people were like, I'm never playing it, I'm selling it right away. All of this stuff, it got real intense in the comments section. And so, I, we, I got this game, we got this game. It was a birthday, an early birthday present to me mm -hmm. um, from my mother-in-law, who was, she's a huge Jurassic World fan, huge Jurassic Park fan. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is this looks cool. This looks like a cool game, mm -hmm. you know? And she was like, okay, I'll get it. She offered to get it for my early birthday present, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this game, just to kind of give you, an, I just want to kind of let you know all the facts. This game, uh, MSRP is like $120, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. $120. They did have a couple little, little um, Kickstarter exclusives, like a sleeve. They gave us some wooden bits, and they threw in um, some decorative dinosaur minis, as well as a new playable character, which was Blue. Everybody knows that. So you could play as Blue the Raptor. Okay? Yeah. So... Just to give you some overview of all the, which if you don't already know, of all the stuff that has come out about this game. And, and so let's come to our thoughts, our experience, okay? So mm -hmm. without any spoilers here, what did you like about the game? For me, I like that it was cooperative. Mm -hmm. um, I do like cooperative games, especially games like this where it's like, okay, you're managing a bunch of stuff, trying to survive type of, um, you know, type of game. I think the, um, the care, I liked that you could play as, you know, different characters. And mm -hmm. it was, for me, it did feel thematic to a certain extent. Okay. Um, and I, I love thematic games. So I felt like, I mean, it was pretty thematic. I mean, you did feel like you were in a dinosaur park. Okay. Um, so yeah, for me, I feel like the, the, um, you know, just like all the dinosaur minis, I thought the minis were cool. Um, and yeah, just overall, like it gave you that, that whole Jurassic World vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying not to spoil anything, but yeah, like for me, um, it felt like a dinosaur park. Right. Uh, for me, oh, and just so you know, we played through this at two players. Mm -hmm. um, we had kind of done a little bit of research just at what the preferred player count, and it mm -hmm. seemed like two players was the ideal number to play this. And I agree with that, and I'll get into that a little bit mm -hmm. later. Right. Um, so for me, what I, I liked, there to a certain extent, it did feel thematic in ways, right? You did feel like you were building up, a, you were managing this park right with all these dinosaurs mm -hmm. you know 
and to a certain extent it did feel thematic and 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 it was a little chaotic which i didn't mind you know i felt no. like that kind of played into the game right mm -hmm. it's hard to know what a dinosaur is going to do so if there's mm -hmm. that randomness in there it feels partially chaotic right yeah. if there's things that are happening whether they're random or not like you know the stories of Jurassic Park. You know the stories of Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. You know things are probably going to go wrong at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And I think this game does have some of those intense moments to where you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like we're doomed. Like, there's just so much going on. I don't mm -hmm. know how, you know, and it feels right. like, okay, this is how it should feel to run a dinosaur to be a part of Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It makes sense because... Mm -hmm. That's that's what it is, you know? Like, that that is what it is, okay? If you came in thinking it was going to be, like, a petting zoo, like, that's obviously not going to... doesn't yeah. work like that, right? So, <laughs> something to keep in mind um, mm -hmm. for that. But I think it, it did have a good level of tension at times. Um, I think the artwork was beautiful. Yes. Um, I, it does have a timeless look to it mm -hmm. um, that I really like. Um it wasn't just like screenshots from the movie, you know? I was kind of happy it wasn't just yeah. like pictures of the movies thrown into a game, um, mm -hmm. like pace it on. I know they said that they spent like several years working on this. So the art, they got really well done. It was it almost like unique. com like a comic book yeah. type feel right. for the art, which I thought was cool. And yeah, they could have easily just pasted on scenes from the movie or pictures of the actors and called it a day. But I felt like they went the extra mile, especially with the art. Right, right. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that was fine. Um, turns were, when you're taking your actions, they do feel relatively snappy and quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, the game takes roughly two hours to play, mm -hmm. right? So it's about, it's a two-hour, I think it says two two and a half hour game when you play it per game per game right yeah <laughs> and there was um, how many 12 total there are yeah yeah if you include the tutorial then yeah. you have the 10 stories and the one finale mm -hmm. so 12 yeah 12. so 12 total but the finale is the replayable at the end of the tutorial so 10 real stories in the finale right okay so that's any other positives that you had about the game um, no, I think that pretty much sums it up. I mean, I did like the artwork too. That, I mean, right. I did mention the minis, but the artwork was really nice too. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you feel like when you were playing the game that there were moments of excitement or that it like, I don't know how to say this. Yeah. Did it feel like there were like, you were excited, um, about unlocking stuff? Did you get yeah. excited when you did unlock stuff? Yeah. Without saying what we're obviously unlocking, but did the game deliver on that when it comes to the legacy? Yeah, part? I I thought like the whole scratching off, discovering things, unlocking stuff was cool. I right. like that in games, and I don't I don't know if I've ever done anything like that in a game. The legacy games we have haven't had any that we've played haven't had any like scratch off yeah. things that I can think of. Um, right. So I, that Charter did. Charterstone, does Charterstone have scratch offs? I can't remember. Charterstone might. Okay. I maybe don't know, or maybe there's just stickers. stickers. It might just be stickers. Um, but yeah, that was. I mean, I did like that part, and I think it was kind of like, okay, what's coming next? That was like an exciting part, or right. if I felt like we were at, we were doing well, right? You know, because we don't play a ton we're not of gonna legacy die. games, right? We we yeah. haven't played a ton of legacy games, mm -hmm. um, so. So you felt like the they were pretty exciting unlocking things. There were maybe a little bit here and there when I got excited about unlocking stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think that there was ever really a time where the game, because usually in legacy games there comes a point where things like just like things change more dramatically. Oh yeah. Um, I didn't feel like there was a ton of change from game to game, right? Maybe your objectives or things that you were supposed to complete during the game, uh, they changed slightly. Yeah, they did. Just slightly. slightly. Like, maybe it was like you were going to the same place, but the things you needed to get were just a little bit different. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you were kind of doing the same thing from time to time. Um, there are those round cards uh, that are what changes up the game the most, yeah. right? These different events right. that are going to happen in the different scenarios. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to probably change the most. Yeah. Uh, and those sometimes were a hit or miss. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the negatives. What is negative that you have about the game? Any negatives that you have? Um, I feel like in between each game, there's a lot of like prep. To go into the next game. The setup and stuff? Yeah. Uh, I feel like, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot that you have to do before you can play the next game. Um, I felt like it was a little repeated, mm -hmm. like, from game to game, like you said. Right. Um, there was some repeats. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think. Uh, and I agree. I think there were a lot of repeats. Mm -hmm. And that might be what hurt it a lot for me, because I was like, after you set up all this game, right, you set it all up, and for the first half or so of the game, it just kind of adds more and more and more and more and more, mm -hmm. right? So at the beginning, it's like, oh, setup's not too bad. Okay, add more. Yeah. Okay, it gets a little longer, a little longer, a little longer, a little longer. Mm -hmm. So it's, at, and when I say it's adding stuff, I don't mean it's adding, like, things that are, like, necessarily, like, mind-blowingly awesome kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, it just becomes more, yeah, more to manage, yeah. more to keep track of, mm -hmm. but not a lot of twists that are exciting more, I yeah, guess, yeah. um, more puzzles, I guess mm -hmm. I should say. And so without trying to be too spoilery, but it does feel a little bit redundant because then you play the game mm -hmm. and then if you take it all apart and set it all back up and then you're mm -hmm. just doing almost the same thing, just slightly different i feel like that made it some games i won't say all of them but some games that made it boring right almost like all right we just gotta get through this game so we can get to the next one you know to get to the next one not all of them were like that but right. when there was a lot of repeats right it felt that way and we almost fell into the same roles it was always like okay andrew you go take care mm -hmm. of these puzzles that we got to do yeah samantha Go hurt. Make sure that the animals are okay. Like, you just have mm -hmm. to take care of the dinosaurs. Take care of the dinosaurs. I'll run around and we'll try to Make sure be they there with each other. each other. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that's one thing, too. I felt like in the game, there was a... So, for the, no matter how many player counts you have, you only have nine actions total. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, this is a negative for me. And this is why we played through that, too. Because mm -hmm. in a two-player game, you each have four actions. And then there's one action that... You get to decide who gets so somebody's going to take five actions, mm -hmm. right? Every single round. Yeah. Okay. But if you play four players, everybody's only getting two actions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're barely going to be moving around hardly at all. Sure. You're not going to be able to do. You're going to do like a little bit, and mm -hmm. nothing. I feel like you're going to be able to really do is going to be too significant mm -hmm. each round. Whereas if I'm a two player, I could I could start working on objectives in the first round. You know, yeah. and you don't have to consult with everybody like there's only one or two because the game, when it comes to those puzzles, you're min maxing those actions. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. I, we have this many actions. How many actions do I need to solve this puzzle? How many actions do I need if I need to solve this puzzle? How can I get some free actions? Okay, mm -hmm. but we need to make sure that the, this doesn't happen yeah. uh, or we're going to get a consequence at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. And so you're just trying to, essentially what you're doing is you're min-maxing your actions and grasping for any mm -hmm. extra you can get out of, you know, maybe I'll get lucky and get a card that helps me. Or maybe I'll get lucky and, and the dinosaurs will just do what I want them to do. Mm -hmm. They'll go to the right place, you know, and they'll yeah. just make it a little bit easier and you hope that that's what happens. Yeah. So that whole min-maxing, I think, is what makes it boring from time to time. And it's just mm -hmm. like, okay, let me sit here and let me think, okay, I need to do this and move that and do this and do that. Okay, I can get this one done in five. I need all five of my actions. So I, mm -hmm. if you want me to do this... I got to have that fifth one and good luck with whatever it is you're going to try to do. Now, yeah, so. it did feel, um, I think it did make it boring that way too, 
where it's just like, okay, you go do this thing, I'll go do that thing. But I do agree, like, I, I mean, I would not want to play this at four players. No. Because, yeah, you're only getting two actions. And I think even with the actions that we had, nine total, that even felt like it was stretching it. Right. Sometimes. In some games, there, in a lot of games, it's like, yeah. we don't have enough actions. We just don't. Yeah. And I was like, okay, maybe it's supposed to feel this way because it's a dinosaur park that's trying to fall apart or mm -hmm. whatever. Right? Yeah. But then there were a couple games, at least towards the end of the campaign, when I was like, okay. I felt like it got harder, harder, harder. And then towards the end, it was just kind of like. It eased up. It's almost like they almost gave up towards the end. They're like, all right, here, whatever. Yeah. Like, this is. And it just, it, I was like, oh, now I have too many actions. But now I'm, I don't have anything to do. Like, what was the point? Like, what am I supposed to do? Right? Yeah. I, I just won't even use it because right. we're pretty much done. Well, and. So, and my negative too that I wanted to talk about was the fact that if even if we completed all of our objectives, right, and the dinosaurs just you had terrible rolling, right. and the dinosaurs ended up hurting each other, and you got too many consequences, right. like you lose, right. And so, I thought that was kind of like, okay, yeah, it's a dinosaur park, like I get that, but. When you're focusing on so many different objectives and yeah, puzzles, four or five different objectives. like it's impossible to be able to manage all of the dinosaurs too. But there were, right. you know, that that's not like every game, but there was a game specifically I can think of, maybe a couple where I was like, it's just not manageable, you know, with right. all of the like puzzles that you're doing. Right, luck does play into it, even luck of setup. You yeah. might get lucky in setup, and you're like, oh, thank goodness it just happens to fall this way because I can complete this objective yeah. in just a couple turns. Right. Right? The game, it can be very swingy and very luck. And again, I try to give them credit because I'm like, okay, it's a dinosaur park. You know, you can't mm -hmm. anticipate everything that's going to happen. Right. But it's almost too much, whether, whether it be dinosaur movement, where they're going to be doing, who they're going to be attacking, the roles that you're making for when they do attack, mm -hmm. the the cards that get that get brought out, whether the item cards or the sector cards that come out, right. you know, it just is, it's random. It's very random. And so there were games where it was like, by the third, maybe, I think there was maybe like one game we got to the third round and it was like, we're literally about to lose right now. We're only in the third round. Yeah. Because like things just went that bad that quickly and it was mm -hmm. impossible. And so it was like, I can't, we can't do it, we can't. And then it was just done. Like, yeah. you only got to the third round. And then I'm getting a little bit more frustrated. He's like, I just set up that whole game. And I only got halfway through because it was super swingy with the luck. Mm -hmm. But then there were times that I lucked into a win. I did experience yeah. it. We did like, oh, thank goodness I got this card. Or, oh, thank goodness the dinosaur didn't do this and did that instead. Mm -hmm. Like, that was... A, a little, uh, yeah, I don't know. It does deter you down. to talking about the different characters, like, because you do, like you said, fall into playing the same characters. And I, because yes. of just the way that the game is, you're like, well, I have to be this person because this is what we're going to need to be able to right. win. Right. Like, I need someone that's going to herd dinosaurs, or I need someone that's going to be you know good with puzzles or right. like whatever it is but it then i i was kind of bummed because i was like i felt like i didn't get to experience all the characters there was a lot of characters you just didn't play yeah because you're thinking oh this is cool that so-and-so is in the game but i'm never gonna use you yeah they're not that like because i need some i need this and i need this and this is what mm -hmm. i know and i'm gonna stick to it so mm -hmm. then you end up not unlocking as much stuff if you yeah. win or even if you lose mm -hmm. like improving your characters like it just doesn't you're just kind of end up playing the same characters you do. and i felt like yeah. there were i at the beginning i kind of branched out and played some different but after all i got the hang of it, i was like oh I'm just going to always play this person because mm -hmm. this person is always going to help me the most. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. after a big change that happened in the game, I was like, then, oh, okay, I'm just going to play this person. I'm just going to play them the whole time. Yeah. Because the things that you were doing in the game weren't that much different. So mm -hmm. it didn't encourage me to really change up my play style. Yeah. You know, and we went, we won seven or eight games. Mm -hmm. I think we won seven or eight and lost two or a th a three, three or four, three something or like four, that. Yeah. Right, it was something like that. So, 
so yeah, so and some of those we swung in the wins and we swung in the in the in the losses. So and I'll say one another thing. As you're unlocking stuff, at some point you unlock an aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. And because you're not you don't have very many actions, there was one whole aspect of the game until the end, until maybe the last couple games, I didn't even really we didn't really have a chance to even experience it. Mm Mm-hmm. There was like a certain action or thing that you could go and do and potentially to help you in future games, but it was impossible to do it. Or at least I felt like I was like, it's not worth the action. Yeah. Because then what I may or may not get is so random. Yeah. It's not worth it to go get, to waste my actions. I'd rather just try to win and, you know, set myself up potentially, Mm -hmm. you know, for whatever. So... Not until the last couple of games, I just felt like we didn't even get to experience that really. Mm-hmm. And then the last couple, like I, we, because we had extra actions, like I said, those were the only times I was like, oh, we can finally do this. <laughs> but we're towards the end of the campaign, so it's not really doing too much for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so, little, yeah. Too little, too late. Right. So, yeah. So, we have a lot more negatives than we do have positives about this game. So, let's go ahead and jump into our scoring, and then we will talk about spoilers so for this game first off okay go ahead what's your score for the game (laughs) all right i am gonna give this game um a seven because i do not think it is an awful game okay i don't think it's amazing but i don't think it's awful do i think there's things that need to be like tweaked Sure, but I'm going to give it a solid seven because I think that it does deserve some credit as far as like the game itself, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I still enjoyed playing it. There were games that I was like bored, (laughs) but I I, overall, I thought it was, it was a decent game. I mean, yeah. All right. I'm going to give this. I thought of another negative. I'm going to give this a five and a half. 5.5. Mm-hmm. 5.5. I'm being a little generous. I almost wanted to go five, to be honest. And I just thought of... I hate the production quality of the game. Other than the minis, I felt like the tokens were horrible production. And I had the wooden ones for some of them. But it was like... Yeah. It was just not good. The stickers that come in the game, I had issues with the stickers... The tokens were bad. I didn't think the cards were great. But, like, ah, yeah. I just, it, I, it was fun. If I had paid for this, it would have been less, right? Mm-hmm. I I appreciate this because it was a gift. I like that we got to play through it. Mm-hmm. I would never play through it again. This isn't like a pandemic where people go out and buy multiple sets and play multiple campaigns. Yeah. You'll play this once. You'll never want to play through the campaign again. And let me ask you this. Well, I'll answer it first. <laughs> I might only play the replayable one time. And that's because we'll play with your mom because she bought it as a gift. Just so she can experience the game. But other than that, I have no desire to play this ever again. Or Eli. Right. Because he <laughs> likes dinosaurs. Yeah. He like loved watching. And the us finale play it. was so boring too. Yeah, the finale. The finale and that's the thing. It's like, oh, it's not even exciting. I think they put they put a lot of effort into the art, and I can appreciate that. I think that the artwork is amazing, but I will say, besides the dinosaur minis, like the right. you know it w- the production wasn't the greatest. Right. So when you're unlocking dinosaurs, that could be a little exciting yeah. and stuff, but. That's why I'm saying five and a half. Mm -hmm. It was an experience. Um, There were some moments like unlocking dinosaurs, that kind of stuff. There were a couple things that happened. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. There were some moments that were decent in the game. But for me, most of it was just monotonous. And it was just the same. I just felt like it was the same thing. Yeah. Almost every time, just slightly different. I think it was just built up to be more right than it was um and maybe that's why people are like i don't i don't hate the game it's just mm-hmm. it could have done so much more i don't hate it i don't actively hate it there yeah. are some issues there are some things that look cool that were neat because mm-hmm. at the end i felt like i did build up a park yeah 
that was cool. I got to create that. That was neat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah. So, I'll give it a five and a half. And, you know, there were some good moments. Uh, but it definitely felt like it dragged. It did. Yeah. yeah. So, with that being said, I'm going to take a quick... Hey, you got a couple seconds here. We're going to go into spoilers and talk about the things... Um, that we unlocked in the game. So if you're interested in that, mm -hmm. that's what we're going to talk about next and maybe give a little bit more depth as to what we were talking about, okay? So, I'm going to count down. Three, two, <laughs> one. Spoilers coming. All right. <laughs> spoilers, right? Yeah. So, spoilers are... This is essentially the, the movies, right? You're essentially just yeah. playing through each movie. Mm -hmm. Every single scenario... Is essentially kind of like the movies, except for they're like, oh, hey, um, Jurassic Park 3 didn't happen on East New Bar. <laughs> well, it did now. <laughs> and we're going to make it on there, right? And so it's like, oh. Uh, and, like, I thought they were going to come up with, like, their own cool ending at the end. No. It's just Jurassic World 2. Dominion or what? No, no, not the last one. Not the last one, but the, no. the second and the third yeah. of Jurassic World. Okay. Fallen Kingdom. Fallen Kingdom. It's just yeah. that. It's it just is. the lava. And it's random where the lava goes and saving them, right? Yeah. So, ah, uh, it was just, you have all these, so as you're going, you're unlocking these different buildings. And literally each building is just, here are a bunch of tiles that have different it could be DNA tiles that have mm -hmm. letters on them. It could be crates that have different colors. Or it could be a control building where they have different, essentially, like, wires. Like, yeah. uh, routes of wires. Yeah. All you're doing in all of these puzzles is just either swapping, mm -hmm. right? For the DNA, all you're doing is swapping mm -hmm. to try and create a grid of certain, whatever they say. Hey, make this, make this, and make this all at the same time. Or whatever it is. The crates are just make rows of this color. Okay? Mm -hmm. Make rows of two different colors. Make rows or columns of three different colors. And it was just like, oh, wow. Right? And then you have the control center, where it's like literally flipping. And the, so the beginning, they're real small puzzles. Yeah. And not that they really get bigger, but at the one big point where you go from Jurassic Park to Jurassic World. That's where a lot of stuff switches, right? Mm -hmm. And... They replace all the buildings with the exact same building. It's just, hey, now the puzzle's a little bigger. There's there's more options. So now you can do now you can do three, three columns instead of one. Or now you have to do three different kinds of uh, DNA strands all together instead yeah. of just one or two. And it's just like, what? Yeah. It's just the same puzzle. It is the same puzzle. It's just yeah. the same puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I'm going to pick the character that lets me just go into any room when I go into a building. Because I don't want to spend actions moving around a room because you got to be in this room in order to swap these two. got to go to this room in order to swap these two. It's stupid. I yeah. should just be able to go in and, and swap. Yeah. Right? But that's obviously you can't have one room built. I don't know. It was dumb. <laughs> it was so dumb with that. And then you have... So, yeah, I played the lady that always helped me with uh going into every room or you always had um you always had to have the legacy characters like dr Wu or hammond to help with the puzzles mm -hmm. um or somebody that would help with hurting yeah and or i always played the other lady i always played nancy vasquez or i played alejandra or whatever <laughs> those were the ones that i played especially after we got further in right once i got to yeah. know those are the ones that i played mm -hmm. all the time because they're the ones that helped me when i i get i didn't have to start at a helipad every single time and waste two actions at the beginning of the round i can yeah. start right in the discovery yeah. or i can get these extra little things because now i can get item cards whenever i lead people well if i'm doing puzzles and i'm leading people around i might as well get the dang cards for them every turn mm -hmm. so I wasn't going to play an Owen Grady. I wasn't going to play uh, Claire Deering or whatever. Yeah, you know? I don't even think... Because I was bummed because I wanted to play a lot of the characters. But I'm like, we're going to lose. Like, right. if, because this won't work. Like, right. I know we're doing Like, Owen Grady, the same you get thing. to kind of control Blue. Well, Blue doesn't even come out until 8. Yeah. And then at one point, Blue becomes a token that's on the board. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, and then I'm like, that was the Kickstarter thing. And I was like, Blue seems like 
a waste of using her. I feel character. like blue should have been like a actual mini though. Um, like not just a token know. and she should have been utilized more. I think people wanted her. But it was just like I'm not gonna use that. Like yeah. I'm just not going to. Well there were just clearly characters that were far better than others. In the beginning I'd play as John Hammond. I thought John Hammond was good. Right? He could help move you around. Yeah. So I was like, go get go get your stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and then Alejandra, you know, being able to place out more barriers in the beginning was nice, or you know, her being able to go into any room. Which was good. And then at some point they're like, oh, okay, now the now the island has power, right? Yeah. But the power can only go out once, which was interesting because now the, the storm warnings are going to come in. Mm -hmm. But then you just got to flick a token. More luck. All yeah, right, flick a, a token, luck. flick a token, flick a token, and hope it comes up green and not red. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is more luck stuff. And I was just like, and you're I just always... compounding luck with luck with luck with luck. Yeah, I always play the veterinarian no or the um or Doctor January who was hurting dinosaurs. Right. Um. But yeah, I felt like I really only got to utilize a very small amount of characters because yeah. of that. Um. I will say though, I did think it was cool that they went through the movies. Right. In the game, like, that was neat. Yeah, but um, I swore they had said, like, yeah. oh, the finale, that's our own thing. I was like, no, it's not. It's just the end of the second. It's it not is, even the yeah. end of the second Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. It's just, try to rescue these dinosaurs. Oh, and guess what? This guy is trying to steal them to go sell them. Okay, that's not your own ending. It's what happened in the second movie. I thought it was going to be something different. Yeah. Because, like, this was on the cusp of the third one coming out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, maybe they got insider information because they supposedly built, made this game with Universal. Oh, yeah. And, like, maybe you had insider knowledge about the third and final Jurassic World. Pfft, no. I thought it was dumb that they put Jurassic Park, the third one, in this island. And you yeah. had Eric running around. <laughs> I was like, what? Eric? Like... You know, was, uh, and then you had gray and then, I don't know. It was just, it was like, oh, hey, how do we make this harder? The people that you're trying to save disappear and then they just show up somewhere. You gotta go find them. Lexi and, it's like, cool. Lexi and Tim, the two yeah. little kids from Jurassic Park, they just like, yeah. Right. Oh, hey, here they are. Oh, cool. You gotta go rescue them. We They're, they're somewhere. Right. Which I'm like, I guess is like the movie, but I was like... Freaking Lexi and Tim, like, right. you're messing up my gameplay. Right. And so the thing that we were talking about that we didn't really get to experience was the field research. So you could go oh, out to yeah. a dinosaur and you could take this action that give you these little amber pieces, which was one of the upgraded from the Kickstarter, which mm -hmm. I was like, oh, these are cool tokens. Yeah. But we barely got to use them. It was mm -hmm. only when um, you went and... Uh, researched a, 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 an animal or a dinosaur. You could mm -hmm. everybody could do each dinosaur once or whatever each round. Um, and so you would get these, and at the end of the thing, if you won, you add above all the ones that you did the field research, and you need to scratch off on your portfolio. And depending mm -hmm. on which section you were scratching off, you might get extra health for the dinosaurs, more defense. Uh, they might get uh, these little science symbols that would eventually unlock this perk if you got enough, which we didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't even think we got to thirty. To unlock the third thing. I think we yeah. just got like, well, at the end, there was one game where we finally got like 11. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most we've ever gotten mm -hmm. in one round. Because we had extra actions. Yeah, we did. Because it was like, oh, this is super weird. Complete sudden shift. Yeah. But we just never got to experience it. Mm hmm Okay? I didn't even really, like a lot of the cards, like some of the cards are cool, but then you get to the ones that are like, oh, put these in the end area. And you have to do this in order to get something and then tear them up at the end. And mm -hmm. someone was like, I can't, they had to deal with the field research. And if I can't do it, I was like, what a waste. And then it's a waste. Tear yeah. up, nothing. Goodbye. Right. Yeah. So we didn't really get to experience the field research that much mm -hmm. because I'm too busy spending all of my actions in the Discovery Center getting crates, in the genetics lab doing that thing, yeah. you know, trying to get cards, trying to unlock cards. Mm -hmm. Then I got to go to Control Center because now they're like, hey, uh, try to get the power from sector two connected in order to complete this objective. Mm -hmm. Oh, but then the power goes out, so I gotta go over this building. I gotta flip, flick a freaking coin. Yeah. Oh, let's hope it comes up green. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sound obnoxious, but it was just so dumb with the puzzles. Yeah, the puzzles were dumb. I just, I, 
I was like, this is like the same. We just, we do the same thing like over and over and over again. Right. Um, I think I wanted more like, uh. It took away from the dinosaurs, I thought. It did. Like more theatrical stuff. Right. I don't know. Like. Because the only thing dinosaurs brought to it was, hey, there's all these dinosaurs. They're all randomly moving around and they're going to eventually collide and try to kill each other. Because like. Half the time, I didn't feel like my life was really in danger. I was mm-hmm. running around doing puzzles. Yeah. And they were just like, oh, hey, I'm wandering around. Roll this big giant D20. I'm going to go somewhere random. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, like, in, in the movies, you know, like, they're fighting for their life and, like, trying to manage all right. all this chaos. But it's like, the puzzles, besides the power thing, the power thing right. makes sense. But other than that, I was like... I, I don't know. I feel like you could have did something different. Right. I would have liked to have seen, like, okay, Jurassic Park 3, right? They have the eggs. The velociraptors are coming for the eggs. you got to do something, mm-hmm. right? And so, hey, go get this DNA. <laughs> go yeah. get this these crates. Again. You know? Yeah. Um, or, you know, something that had to deal with. Like, I even felt like the Mercs. That were coming in uh, for what? I, what was it? There's a couple. You had the mercs that came in and that were trying to catch the dinosaurs or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that felt super not like the second movie, mm-hmm. right? When they're when they're out there trying to get in the ACU, they just kind of hung out <laughs> with because you eventually unlock what you think you unlock. You're gonna get the Endoraptor or the Indominus, but it might not be in the right order because you just get a random one. Yeah. So we luckily got them in the right order. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't unlock every dinosaur. There were a couple herbivores that we didn't. Um, the that coolest part thing. That was exciting, though. The coolest thing, okay? The coolest thing was that. So you get the little DNA that you add to them. And the coolest thing was that our Brachiosaurus became a carnivore. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, this herbivore becomes a carnivore. And, and you have him fighting, fighting yeah. Spinosaurus or something yeah. going around. That was, I thought that was funny. I was it like, was oh, funny, yeah. all of a sudden, Brachiosaurus has got a taste for meat. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it was going to be. So, yeah. there were those funny moments, and I was like, oh, what happens if Indominus becomes an herbivore? But that never happened. Um, so, yeah, that was our game. Um, but the cards weren't super exciting. I felt like it no. took so long just to. <sighs> And it's only five rounds. I've only so many actions, but then it's like I gotta sit here and I gotta figure out how I'm gonna be able to finish these puzzles. Mm-hmm. And, so, and like, how are we gonna? And then how how are we gonna manage other stuff in the park too? Because right. each round card, you have something else you have to do too. So it's like, okay, I gotta do. And then you almost have to make this decision, like. Okay, do I just let the dinosaurs kind of kill each other and then complete the objectives and just hope we don't have too many consequences? Right, because if you don't complete the objectives, you lose. Yeah. But if you do complete the objectives but get five consequences, you lose. Mm -hmm. So you have to be like, okay, dinosaurs, just be lucky and stay away from each other. Mm -hmm. Or I'm just going to try to build up all of these barriers and try to Mm -hmm. lock people in. Which we kind of accidentally, accidentally on purpose... Mm -hmm. We boxed the Triceratops and the Stegosaurus at the top of the board. Yeah. And the entire, almost multiple games, the Stegosaurus and Triceratops, they just went left and right and up. And they couldn't because they're at the top of the island. So they just sat there. Yeah. The whole game. They just left, right, east, west, north. Every once in a while, they might go south and hit one barrier. Yeah. But, like, they were just chill. So I was like, hey, we never have to worry about them again by the yeah. third or fourth time that this happened. Because we're like... We locked them in there. We locked them up You know, there. because, yeah, you... It's almost like you have to have barriers. Right. Like, you have to. And I think it got to the point for us with some of these games, too, as we're talking... Because I was thinking about how the barriers eventually become electrified. Yeah. It got to where we're like, okay, let's just do what we can and get all the objectives before the power goes out. Because once the power goes out, I'm not wasting actions going to turn the power back on. Mm-hmm. I could care less. Yeah. Okay, we got them. They've got enough barriers that might slow the dinosaurs down for a little while. Let's go ahead, try to get these puzzles done before mm-hmm. the power goes out. And so then we'd be like, we're just done. And yeah. the power goes out, I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> yeah. I don't even care. Now mm-hmm. I'm just going to run around and try to herd dinosaurs and keep them alive mm-hmm. and complete these silly little objectives. Yeah. Like, oh, this tour group needs to go here. 
this tour group wants to see a carnivore eat a goat, or they yeah. want to go to the birds, or they want to go to whatever. I the hate the, attra the attraction cards are always the biggest pain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just more like it was. It wasn't like they were just like I know you. We've already gave you all these objectives, but here's an extra one. And if you don't do it this round, you're getting punished. And so you're doing all this stuff. It's like, well, I have to stop and go do this one silly little thing, or I could potentially lose. And then after you get that one done, you are like, okay, I got that done. A couple actions. I'm going to go back to my puzzles. Then you flip it over. Oh, look, another silly thing. Now we want you to travel these people all the way over here. We want you to herd that dinosaur over there because they want to take yeah. a look at a triceratops or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, let me stop what I'm doing to go do that. You know, yeah. don't mind that the power's out. Let's continue to give our guided tours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, there was just like a lot, a, a lot yeah. of, I don't know. I feel like I've talked over you I'm sorry. It's okay. So, anything else that you want to share? I I swear I don't hate the game. I just hate the luck. The only thing that you could avoid the luck yeah. was if you got attacked, you could spend your item cards. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. Everything else, there was no mitigation. Mm -mm. Unless you had Ian Malcolm that's like, oh, you can re-roll, or you can re-flip a yeah. token, or you can redraw a card, whatever it was. That was it. I happen to just have really good rolling at the end, like the last roll. few games, um, because... I, you know, if you don't roll the greatest, like, you're just, that's simply in itself. Oh, you're going to lose. And finally, this will be the last thing I'll say. Okay, no matter what your score is at the end, the epilogue oh. is essentially the same. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your score is. The world's just slightly more thankful for your knowledge. <laughs> you experience this, and now the world will... Be better off because of your experience. Or, hey, you did a really horrible job, but you're still the only one that has this experience. The world's still the same, no matter how your score is. Yeah. No matter if you win all the games. It's not like all the dinosaurs are still safely somewhere and we know mm -hmm. how to actually manage. Nope, they're all still in the world. It's all still going to be crazy because we got to learn how to live with these dinosaurs. And we're all still... Just thankful for your experience. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping there was going to be more of like a story. Something. You know, I was like ready for it. I was like, okay, we finished it. And like, no. where's my story based on what my score is? Right. And the end of the game was, your story was, you just finished 12 games of The Legacy of Isla Nublar. Yeah. The world's the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um, okay. Right. Yeah, so um, they could have they could have added more. Something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Don't just throw in random junk that happens and I yeah. don't know. Right. Although it's it was okay. I'm never gonna play again. It could have been more thematic. Like I been. really think it could have been more thematic, and that was the disappointing part for me. This is not worth $120. And no, it is not worth that much. Money. If you want to try it out, you know, and you like puzzles, if you love puzzles. Get this. Don't spend $120 for it. Mm -hmm. Get it when get it on a deep, deep, deep discount. Okay? Get it on a deep discount. I would say I feel maybe 40 bucks I would spend $40. No, Come I on. no. The all the stuff that horrible. comes with it. All the stuff that comes with it. Other games okay. that have less than this, Maybe they I'm charge like eighty dollars and you're $80. getting like nothing. I wouldn't pay eighty dollars for this game. Well sixty would be a max. I mean, I I yeah, if it wasn't a gift, I don't know if we would have right. purchased it. And again, it. I'm a, I'm very appreciative of my mother in law watching this. <laughs> I'm very appreciative of this game. Thank you. I it was something I wanted to experience. Yeah. I'm glad that I did. And I'm sharing it with the people to let you know what to expect. But here's the thing. Like, experience it yourself. You know, don't go based off of what, like, what our opinion is of the game or what other people's opinions are. I'm one of those people that, like, I feel I like you should it. just experience it because you might like it. Right. You know? Because there's other games that people might say are, you know, awful, and then you play it, and you're like, oh, yeah, like, I kind of like it. So everybody has different tastes. Yeah, listen to my wife. If you, if you <laughs> like puzzles and you like things to be monotonous every single game, <laughs> this is for you. You know what? If I not, think, okay, honestly, this would be really great, I think, for, like, like, teenagers, like, kids that are in 
to dinosaurs. Okay, they would appreciate it and not really care about the things like we do. So that's that's what I think. It's ten and up. Ten if, and up. If yeah. you are if you are if you are a gamer in the community that's like been around for a while, I don't think this is for you. No. But no. then I I don't know if it's really for a new gamer. I don't know. It's for something that is I don't know. Good at puzzles. It's some, if you like puzzles and you like dinosaurs, there you go. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And you like that AP of min-maxing. <laughs> All of your very few actions. There is lots of AP in this game. I'm just right. gonna let you know. Well, it's, it's min-maxing. I don't even know if it's AP. I just think you're just sitting there trying to, to make the most out of what you got. Yeah. So, anyway, right. I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the rant. Um... But yeah, so that's our review for Jurassic World spoilers and non-spoilers uh, mm -hmm. like the legacy of Isla Nublar. So if you like this review, if you didn't like this review, if you bought the game and regret it, if you have the game and you're sitting there thinking, do it, should I play it, should I sell it, <laughs> let me know where you're at with this game. I'm just curious because I know what it was like after the first initial review came out. Um... And now it's been out for a little while. Mm -hmm. I'm I am curious what the general consensus is now. Mm -hmm. I, I it's a five it's a five and a half for me. You know, seven for Sam. So um, it might just be based on who you are. But let us know what do you mm -hmm. think. Is this something that you're more likely to get now or less likely to get? But please like, comment, subscribe, click a little bell icon, and click uh, so you get a notification every single time you post a video. Uh, and yeah, I'm done. I'm done on this one. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.